Hello and welcome. You're in for a treat today because I have a lovely guest with me, the amazing Wendy Newman, media celebrated author and author of the best selling 121 First Dates. Welcome, Wendy. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited about this. I'm Michelle Marchant Johnson, and I'm so glad you're here on my YouTube channel. And I want to tell everyone you want to stay to the end of this conversation because Wendy has something really special for you that you can only get here. And uh, we want to tell you all about it because we want to help you get ready for the love of your life. So Wendy, tell me a little bit more about what we're going to talk about today and what you're going to share with our audience. Okay. So as you can already tell, I went on 121 first dates, 121 first dates. And what I want to provide for women is when people in general, that they don't have to suffer. They don't have to go on 121 <laughs> first dates. I want people to fast track themselves into the love of their life. And what I want to bring is practical, practical tools and advice that can help you kind of shortcut some of the things that get in the way. And I want to save your time, your heart, your energy, so you're not putting out so much effort to get to your to your love. Amen. Hallelujah, sister. That sounds really good. I don't think anybody wants to take the long, painful path to love, right? I did 121, so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wendy and I both had our long and winding journeys to love. I was more of a serial monogamist and in getting into relationships that I stayed in way, way too long. But I used to joke and say I was going to write the book called Dating for Decades while well, you were going on those 121 first dates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm all about helping women, and I know you are too, taking a shortcut and taking the graceful, easy, elegant approach to love. So, what are some things that you would like to share that you learned in these experiences that can be of benefit to our listeners? Yeah, I want to talk about one of the biggest time wasters. And it's something that's really ineffective. And when it happens over and over and over, it makes people want to quit. <laughs> so when I started dating, I got some advice from an article or an expert or somebody that said, you need to handcraft the absolute most perfect email response back. If you're online dating, you need to be really careful, spend a lot of time crafting that response or that reach out because you only have one opportunity to make a good first impression, right? So I was like, okay, I'm on it. <laughs> I'm a good writer. I can do this. And I crafted that email and I would send it out and it would get nothing, crickets, right? I'd spend 45 minutes responding to someone who already wrote me and either got crickets or it went back and forth. And we're going to now talk about what's really natural to have happen. Can I just keep going, Michelle? Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. And I will say before you go in, but don't lose your train of thought here. Um, I have seen this with clients where it's like this painstaking process where they can take literally an hour to craft some short little message in an email response or an online response to a guy. And yeah. I've seen that. So what could typically happen is you reach out or someone reaches out to you. Yay. You're going to connect by email, Yay. right? Yay. <laughs> and you painstakingly write the funny, perfect, sweaty, smart, whip smart piece, right? You send it off. It worked. Great yeah. first impression. He loves you. He's writing, or he or she, right? They're writing back. Okay, good. And now you're going to do it again. And then all of a sudden, you're in this whirlwind of communication, which seems so awesome because they're amazing. And you're at the top of your game and you're working on it and you're putting what turned from minutes to hours into this. And then you go back and forth for, I don't know, anywhere from two days to three weeks. Yeah. Then you get on the phone and then texting, texting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to get on the phone and text. That's next. Then that's happening for a while. Then eventually you're going to move to phone, right? Because that's the next progression because you have to vet the people you date because you don't want them wasting your time. 
You're not going to go out there to a coffee shop or a wine bar and just meet somebody all willy nilly. You want to make sure that they're legit. So all of a sudden you've got anywhere from, I don't know, how many hours are we into this now? Right, (laughs) With the texting, with the writing, with the crafting, with the thinking, with the excitement of reading, sharing of, of that with your friends, right? You've invested time, all that context shifting time. Time, 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 time. And then you're on the phone for God knows how long, right? How many dates, how many days go by before you make a date? And then, then you get to the date. Oh, yay, and they're a real person and you're a real person and you're both standing there. And in the first two seconds, no chemistry. Mm-hmm. It's over. You've just wasted hours and hours and sometimes weeks and even sometimes months on someone writing, thinking, dreaming, talking, sharing with your friends, trying to get back to the context shift of your work for nothing. So I know this is a radical idea, but towards the end there, I just was not even coming close to doing any of that. I was looking at their profile. Now I know that a lot of people just leave their profile blank and that's a real pain in the butt and you do need to get some information somehow. But if I, back in the olden days when they would write things in their profile, <laughs> I, would, I would read the profile and think, yeah, I can spend an hour with that guy, even if I don't like him. I mean, he's an interesting person from what he wrote. Yeah. And I would just go. I wouldn't get on the phone. Often I wouldn't even write back and forth very much. Maybe just the initial connection or two and go. And in fact, when I met Mr. 121, my husband, Dave, uh, I reached out to him. He wrote back and he said, oh, hi, how are you? Hey, I'm new at this and I really don't know how this works. And how about we just like meet Thursday? And I said, great. Mm, we never talked on the it. phone. Love it. So two things come to mind here, Wendy, that I want to interject if I can. Yeah. First of all, it reminded me of a story of one of my clients a few years back who um, she lived like in the San Diego area and he lived in the San Francisco area and they had connected online and they got this thing going because he came to San Diego occasionally for business. But two or three months passed and they had all these phone conversations, all of this exchange all of this texting, and in her mind, she was like thinking, this guy is it, this is, this is the, the, the guy of my dreams, and she was like completely obsessed and in a complete and total fantasy about, about this guy, and I can remember telling her, you know, you got to be really careful about this, because you haven't actually met him yet in person, and that is a really big deal, And sure enough, when she actually did meet him, she said he just wasn't even, she didn't, he didn't even seem like the same person. She like he had a different energy, a different vibe. There wasn't any attraction. She was devastated. She was so disappointed. So the second thing that came to mind is another danger with this, what you're describing, this vetting process is that I think women and I'm sure men could get really caught up in the whole fantasy of something or someone and then that may not be the reality and then boom you've wasted a lot of time and maybe taking yourself on a major head trip of getting caught up in a fantasy and that makes that ooh, that makes that disappointment pretty rough that's like a hard fall after that my yeah client, my client was so sad when yeah. that happened and I had given her I had warned her along the way but she just was so caught up in it she just couldn't help herself yeah same same I've had a lot of clients who are like I know he's going to be the one and I'm thinking he has no track record with you yes. <laughs> your one has a track record of showing up and showing up the way you need him to and all the things right so right. The, the thing that I described the finally show up and there's no chemistry that's actually a good scenario. Another scenario is it that exact same scenario of buildup. And then right when it's time to meet, yes, yeah, something happens and he doesn't show up. Do you know why? Because he wasn't real in the first place. Mm-hmm. He was some 57-year-old guy who was bored in his marriage and lonely. Or he's some 13-year-old girl who's 
a tween and aggravated at the world and just being spiteful or you're catfished mm-hmm. or then there's the guy who um stretches a lot he says he's six feet but he's about uh about a foot off right or his pictures were from 25 years and 50 pounds ago <laughs> yes very common yeah or that he just was so enamored by your amazingness that he just stretched about absolutely everything about who he is you know Really, Wendy, does that ever happen? (laughs) (laughs) Well, and that's another thing that happens that when someone's new, you know, you got to check all that stuff out and wait and see what shakes out as the reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, you've probably heard me say this before, but I always say there's three big F words that can really foul up your love life. Oh, give them to me. I love that F word. Yeah. (laughs) So the first F word is fear our fears that are not founded on facts and and are just our insecurities or our fears of the stuff we make up in our heads. Yeah. Second one is fantasy, what we've just talked about. And I know this whole fantasy routine really well because one of my long-term relationships that I stayed in for so long was all about me fantasizing about what it could be or what it should be or what I wanted it to be and it never actually was. Yep. And the other one is falsehoods. Uh, false beliefs about ourselves, about men, about relationships, and not really being grounded in the truth and reality. And reality is going to come back and slap you right in the face at some point. We cannot dodge reality. So yeah. these, you know, this can get us into fantasy and falsehoods and making up all kinds of crazy stuff in our heads if we, if we're not grounded in reality and we don't recognize someone may not be who they appear to be. We may be spending a whole lot of time and going down a rabbit hole that's going to bring disappointment and frustration. And like you said, it makes people want to quit. They want to yeah. throw their hands up in the in the air and go, oh, to heck with this. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. And even like you pointed out with the fantasy, even if that person you're communicating with is 100 percent legit, which most people are, by the way. So, you know, we only are talking about the outliers that could waste your time, but most people are legit, right? Good men out there. And even if he's a good, legit guy talking to you, you're still probably going to get into that fantasy mode. And what the, what reality is, reality is the date when you're face to face at Starbucks or wherever, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's the reality of it. When you're literally sitting across from each other, when you're talking on the phone or when you're typing, 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 texting, texting, he'll say things that are real. But because you both are so new, you now magnify that to a hundred. So for example, if he texts you and says, what you doing this weekend? And you say, oh, I'm going to my sister's wedding. And what are you doing? And he says, I'm going golfing with Jeff, my cousin, Jeff. Okay. Right. Common, right? Well, now he's Mr. Golfer. Now he, he, does he play at tournaments? Does he, has he ever played at Pebble beach? Does golfing happen, happen every weekend for him? No, he might like golf once every five years, but because you have zero information about him, now you've just blown up this piece of data, which is also what we do with their profile. When we're scanning the profile, we are collecting data on who this person is, and then we're magnifying it. And then he becomes Mr. Whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not real. Mm -hmm. Can I go in a little slightly different direction and have us talk about something else that I think happens here? Yeah. When, when women are out there, and I'm sure men too, but we're speaking mainly to women, uh, and they're looking at profiles, one of the other things that I notice that happens is women can get hyper-focused on some little thing or some tiny little thing that a man mentions or whatever. Like, for example, and I know you've probably experienced this many times too, they'll say, well, I think he runs, you know, I think he's like a fitness crazy guy because there's some picture of him that looks like it's 15 years old where he was out running or something. He's not going to be a match for me because I I don't run. You know, it's like they can pick out like one tiny little thing Mm -hmm. and then they reject or disqualify someone. So I'd like for you to talk on that piece for a minute too. 
Yeah, it happens all the time and it happens in both directions. I had a client who really loved the fact that she had completed a marathon. Now she had only run one in her whole life, but she completed it. So six of her eight pictures were of her running the marathon, right? Yeah, She's so she ass. looks like sporty spice. Yeah, and I, I said, spice. I said to her, I said, are you looking for a marathon buddy? Cause that's what you're gonna get. You know, if you want one, if, if you want your marathon pictures, you get one. You crossing the finish line. That's all you get. You don't get the other mm-hmm. six because everything we put out, what did I say earlier, is blown up to 100. So we will cancel people out and they will cancel us out by what we have in our photos. If you've got 10 photos, every one of them, you have a drink in your hand. Guess what that says about you, party girl? So same thing, like he may not be a drinker at all. Maybe he drinks very socially and only at special occasions, but all the pictures that ever taken at him of him are at the gala and at the work party and at the, and every shot, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen that. I've seen that. And you do make, you do come to that impression. This guy's oh. a little, he's drinking all the time. <laughs> and it might not even be conscious. It it might be just like red flags happening back here and not, right? So you want to pay attention to that. But yeah, we we can get burned out. And when we, or we just can get grumpy about having to do this because it's kind of like going to the gym. Like we like the after effect. We don't like the process all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have fun, but mostly we'd rather not be doing this thing. You know, people call call other people serial daters. Nobody's ever called that to my face, but I'm guessing behind my back they have because I went on 121 <laughs> first dates. But that's the last thing that I ever wanted to be. I never wanted to date. I mean, yeah. I had great dates. There were there were some dates that were amazing. But I don't want to be doing that. Yeah. Right? So yeah, you want to you want to pay attention to what they might be picking up about you, what they might be making up about you based on your pictures and what you're what you're scrutinizing about them cuz we like I was just about to say we get tired. We don't want to be a serial dater. We don't want to have to do this. And you know what? I I just don't want to waste my time anymore, so I'm going to swipe on this guy cuz he's a runner and I'm not a runner or you know, he's is that is he balding under that cap? Ah, I don't know. Right. And and back to meeting right away. Like there I want you to think back to a time where you were really hot for somebody but only because they totally grew on you and you know that dorky looking guy, he would have never turned your head if he was one of the millions scrolling through Match or OkCupid or whatever, or Tinder or whatever, right? You would have not said yes to that one, right? We don't know until we are face-to-face with someone and we get to see their essence and their presence and their masculinity and their humor and their wit. And all of a sudden that uh, mediocre guy just got real hot, like actual hotness. So mm-hmm. you'll not see that when we're in that sort of negative, sick of it, uh, just passing on anyone that's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And, And when you get in that mode, it's good to catch yourself and see if you can pull yourself out. And if you can't, girl, that's fine. Cause sometimes there's just, you know, there's certain times we have lower capacity for being able to give people a chance and to try. And then when we have low capacity, it's cause we're not doing that great. And so on top of not doing that great, then we beat up on ourselves because we should be different. Mm-hmm. Right? Our inner our inner critic will say, you're so picky, right? And then, and now you feel even worse. So what I used to tell myself is as much as I possibly could give people a chance. And there were times in my dating where I just didn't have it in me and I just had to give myself a break. And I want that for you. So with the example you gave with Dave, He said, I'm new at this. How about we meet on Thursday? And for so many women out there, they're going, yeah, but what if the guy never like gets around to actually suggesting something or taking it to the next step? I have ideas on this, but I want to hear what you have to share to to get that um, out of that mode of just the back and forth, back and forth. 
Yeah, I don't remember if he offered up a place, but he might have. Um, but my response was yes. And I think I might have said, like I might have thrown out two choices two choices or one choice. And in fact, that particular night I was going somewhere. And so I wanted to slip in a quick drink with him before I went to my event. So I literally picked the place across the street from where I was going. Cause I think it's very important to be a very lazy dater <laughs> to make it as convenient for you as possible. And hopefully you're not putting anyone else out about that because that way it'll help you not burn out. So I picked the place right next door and um, that's where we met. Like it was, that's simple. Do you want to meet Thursday? Yes. Let's meet at Zuni. Um, see you at the bar, six o'clock. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, and you know what else I like about that? It was a drink. It wasn't like we're going to go spend the afternoon or the evening or whatever together. And I yeah. think for a first meeting, I think it makes a lot of sense to keep it relaxed and casual. And so then coming back to my question though, what if Dave hadn't have said anything like that? What if he hadn't have said, want to meet on Thursday? And what do you what did you do when you're in the 121 first dating uh, process to kind of get someone to take the next step? Of my 121 first dates, I never asked anybody out. And I reached out to almost every single one of them. Out of 121 first dates, there was probably only four or five dates that I didn't reach out to. So how do you do that? How do you get a person's attention and not be the aggressor or the ask router, right? I would just say some version of out of the 25 million people here, hi, I think you're interesting. And let me tell you why. Very short, very just reach out, tap, tap. And then if they're interested, right? If you're interested, write back. That's it. Hey, Jeff, 54321. I see you do X, Y, Z. Me too. I love that. If you're interested, write back. That's it. Just like, Boom, volley it. And if they volley back, great. And now all of a sudden, if they ping a couple of times and they're not asking me out, I did not put up with it very, very much. I, I very kindly, very gently said, hey, so I, um, how would I say it? I wouldn't ask them out. So I'd say, oh, I would often say, hey, if you're ever interested in meeting up, I'd say yes. Mm hmm and basically, if you'd ask me out, I'll say yes. And that is giving them the opportunity to ask, but also them knowing if they ask, they'll win with me. I am a yes. You know, a lot of times men are having a really hard time trying to figure out how fast to move to ask you out because they lost that other one the last time because he asked too quick and she wanted to vet first. So he didn't want to make that mistake again. So now he's going to try and do that thing that we need. So they have it really hard having to lead over there, especially when we're all different and we all need different things. So I would just let them know, big win for you if you ask. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you know what? I do think that's really key to let them know, big win for you if you ask, because many of these men have experienced rejection. They're putting themselves out there. I call this green lighting. You're giving him the green light. It's a go. Mm -hmm. You can you can take the next step and it'll be safe. You're not going to be embarrassed or rejected or shamed. And so I like that. I like that. That's a that's a lovely way to say it. And it's also fine to say, hey, you know what? The next four or five days, I'm pretty free. And next week gets real, real busy. So if you're ever thinking about asking me out, I'd ask sooner than later. <laughs> be a little kinder than that or not so you know but you'll find your grace in that in the situation at hand but if they still didn't ask me out yeah my guy my guy asked me out so that's my, not my guy mm -hmm. yeah, yeah um, one thing I have recommended my clients is to say something like I'm enjoying our conversation here online and think it would be fun to meet in person if you'd like to invite me out yes it's a compliment. You're paying a compliment. You're saying I'm enjoying this interaction and it would be fun to have an interaction in person. And I'm Very a yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Wendy, uh, this is great. This is so fun. And I want to segue here just a little bit because you have created an incredible program that I want to tell our listeners about. I want to have you tell our listeners about. And this is based on your experiences and all you learned 
121 First Dates and in the work you've done and interviewing men. Tell us a little bit about it. And for everybody watching and listening, you can get a link to Wendy's program by clicking on a, a link in the description or on the link below the video. So Wendy, take it away. Tell us all about it. Yeah, the other piece that you want to know about me is my day job was helping women understand men and partner well. I've been doing that for 20 years. And in part of that work, my job was to interview men. So I have interviewed men, thousands and thousands and thousands of men in 20 years on every subject imaginable about men, women, romance, marriage, all of it, dating, all of it, every bit of it. So I have taken the time to create a package a program for you that gives you absolutely everything that I learned in my own personal experience <laughs> on how to win at dating to find your love, how to succeed at dating to find your love. And included in that is a lot of the information that I've gotten from men over the decades, both in my personal life and in my work life in researching and understanding men better. So you'll get a lot of men's point of view and you'll also learn, well, what do they see when they look at your work? At your, at your website, your, your online profile site. What do they think? What are they looking at? What are they seeing? Why do they respond short when we go long? What that's all about? Like I, I basically give you absolutely everything you could possibly need from my own opinion to succeed. So normally it's $147 and I am giving it to Michelle to give to you for 45 that I am literally undercutting myself because I love Michelle. <laughs> and I really wanted to provide that for, for her audience. That is so incredibly generous, Wendy. And I mean, this program could literally transform your dating life. And it's an, it's an incredible value. You just have to use the link here in order to get that value that Wendy's offering. And it's very generous and big hearted of her to do this because I know Wendy very well. We've been friends for many years now and have done a lot of collaboration together over the years. And I know that Wendy puts out very high quality products and puts her heart and soul into this. And, you know, literally like one or two things that you pick up in this program could literally transform your dating life. So be sure to check it out um, because, you know, Wendy has just barely scratched the tip of the iceberg here about what there is to share here. But if you've enjoyed this and you feel like some of these kinds of things could help you to get your love life off life support, it can feel like uh, the life, the love life could be on life support sometimes and that you really want to be ready for love and check out Wendy's program here. And while you're here, if you haven't done so already, if you like what we did here today, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe to the YouTube channel because that helps me and my guests and supports the work that we're doing too. So we're so glad you're here. Wendy, I love you, my friend. Back at you. <laughs> Thank you so much for generously sharing as always. It's always so much fun to do this and I really appreciate it so much. And thank you for the generous offer to the audience here too. That's so awesome. So good to be with you and everybody watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I know this was a longer video and I really appreciate that you value what Michelle is providing because she is, she does top notch stuff over there. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now.